For almost six years now, I've been shooting and editing pictures the exact same way. The workflow is this. Contact a subject to shoot, plan your location, style, and time frame, pack up your bags, and head out. Once you've executed on your vision, head back to the office to edit using the same keyboard and trackpad you've always used. If you're anything like me, you love the process and all the tools involved, but there has been no significant changes in the past few years in the photo editing world. Until now. Introducing Loop Deck Plus. Loop Deck Plus is the next evolution of the custom photo editing console built with an intuitive design that takes the ergonomics of photo editing into consideration to make editing more intuitive, faster, and more enjoyable. The product itself has everything from mechanical keys to improved build quality with tactile, responsive buttons and knobs making the Loop Deck durable and lightweight. Loop Deck Plus is the first and only device on the market custom built to improve the Adobe Lightroom experience. Loop Deck Plus is now compatible with Adobe Lightroom Classic CC and Skylum Aurora HDR. And with Capture One support coming later this year, this product is a no-brainer for all kinds of photographers. This next evolution of the product is equipped with more functionalities, control, and increased customization options, including two dedicated customizable dials and 17 buttons. For those of you who want to personalize your experience even more, a custom mode is included that allows the user full control of all dials. The setup is painfully simple. Connect your loop deck via USB to your computer, download the software, and it automatically links up with Lightroom so you can start editing. Now that I've shown you all the features and capabilities of the loop deck, let's get right into a photo editing session where I can show you what the loop deck is like in action. All right, so now we're jumping into Lightroom here to edit all of the photos that we just took. Um, originally, I shot about 800 pictures this morning. Um, I brought that down to 74 selects, and then now even further down to my favorite four images, um, just for the purpose of keeping this video somewhat short. First things first, I like to adjust the simple things. Um, we're gonna bring down exposure, bring down the highlights, up the shadows a little bit. Right about there. We're gonna add some contrast. Just the super simple things. Um, bring down the blacks, up the whites. Um, I love, I just love how you can adjust with these little knobs, it just keeps it so simple. Um, just to, we're just going to start slowly getting a little tone to the photo. Um, that looks nice. Cool. Um, next we're going to hop over to the tone curve, which we got to use the mouse for. Totally fine. Um, first things first, bring down the highlights. We're going to fade the highlights. So we're going to drop the far right portion of the tone curve. Um, let's head down to the mid tones right here. We'll bring these down. Perfect. Um, fade the blacks just a tiny bit. Not too much. That looks good. Um, and then we're gonna drop these kind of mid blacks, is what you call it, like right here. Just to start to get a tone to the photo. Um, yeah, that looks nice. Bumping up the exposure a little bit. Um, first thing I notice is our jacket is a little bit too um, black. So we're gonna up the blacks a little bit so we can actually have some definition in the blacks so you can see the details. Um, let's see, mess around. As you guys know, editing is a lot of just like kind of messing around with all these knobs and <laughs> seeing what you can get. Um, so I'm, I'm editing all these. This is the first time I'm seeing them. Um, let's see, I'm gonna adjust the exposure a little bit more. Cool. Um, next, we're gonna hop into the HSL tab. Um, super nice that you can adjust all these colors just right here. Um, first things first, saturation. Um, her jeans are a little bit too saturated for my liking. Um, we're gonna bring those down just a little bit, not too much. Looks good. Right about there. Um, and then we're also gonna bump the luminance. Yeah, there we go. Just to brighten them up a little bit. That yeah, looks nice. Um, I don't really like this yellow railing, so we're gonna crop as much as we can at least. Yeah, there we go. Looks nice. Cool. Um, I love this little control dial thing. You can also rotate the photo, makes it nice and easy. Cool, that looks great. Um, Let's pick the before and after button right here and we can kind of see like what we did. Not super, um, super heavy edit. I like to keep it like nice and natural looking, um, but I really like those colors. Uh, next, let's go to the other photo. Cool, so this is another photo in downtown LA. Um, we're gonna edit this one from scratch as well just because it's a completely different lighting situation. Um, again, starting with the simple things first, exposure. Highlights all the way down. Shadow is not all the way up, but we're definitely gonna brighten them up. Contrast, we're gonna add that in. Um, and for this photo, I really want the whites of the wall behind here to pop, so we're gonna bump those up. And then we can bring these blacks down just a little bit. And by doing this, we're actually adding contrast to the photo. Um, yeah, this looks really nice. Look at the whites, see if we do it too much. Somewhere in, like right about there, it looks nice. Um, bring this exposure back down, cool. And now, we haven't even touched the tone curve yet, but now we're gonna 
head into the tone curve right here and kind of mess around. Um, again, we're starting by fading the highlights. I just love what that does to the whites. Um, fading the blacks also. Bring these mid-tones down, like right, not too much, right about there. Uh, the blacks, touch, give those a touch, perfect. Next, we're gonna bump this, let's see. Just messing with those whites in the photo. That looks really nice. Um, I just, it's so simple, like you can really just mess around with all of these knobs and you can just like do so much to the photo. Um, I think her skin and the jeans are a little bit too saturated, so we're gonna just bring down just a little bit on the saturation, but not too much. That looks nice. Let's see a before and after real quick. Um, so as you can see again, not super heavy edit, um, but I do really like to bring out all the natural colors in the photo. Um, the jacket really pops, so we're gonna adjust the brightness or the luminance of the, of the jacket. Um, and as you can see, it's it's not super, uh, not a super noticeable difference, but it definitely definitely brings the jacket out a little bit more. We're gonna bring down the saturation just a tiny in the greens. Um, kind of like a more like a matte look to the jacket. Let's see. I don't really mess too much with the hues, but I think for the purpose of this video, we're gonna kind of mess with the hues of the reds. See kind of what we can get. So if we bring the all the way down, watch the knee kind of messes around with that a little bit. Um, let's see here, I'm gonna bring those back. Um, yeah, no need to mess around with that. Go back to the luminance, bump the reds up a little bit. I'll make the red just a little bit brighter, bring down the saturation. Cool, let's check that out. All right, so now we're going to edit these photos. I think I already have a, had a little edit on there. Um, so we shot both of these photos in this parking garage in downtown LA and it's the light is just beautiful. Um, so again, we're not gonna have to do too much to this photo. I really like to kind of set my shot up in camera before I have to do anything. Um, but yeah, let's uh, start with the simple things again, exposure. Bring down those highlights so we can really see that light coming in from the window. Bump those shadows up, bring the whites up. Right about there. Cool, now we're gonna use a control dial. I like to find a straight horizontal line in the photo to line uh, line it up and make sure that the photo is straight. That looks about right. We're just using this uh, window sill right here. I'm gonna press the control dial thing again. Awesome. Um, hop down to the tone curve right here. Fade those highlights right here. There we go. Bring the mids down. As you can see, most of my photos have the same general tone to them. Looks pretty nice. We're gonna add some contrast into the photo. We'll bump the whites again. Awesome. Now I wanna make her eyes pop even a little bit more. So we're gonna go into the luminance and bump those aquas and blues up. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, not too much. We don't want it to look fake, but we definitely wanna make the colors pop. Um, do a tiny bit of saturation on the aqua. Nice, let's see the before and after of that. Cool, I'm gonna fade these a little bit more. Whoops. I'm gonna use that undo button. Let's bring these back up. I'm gonna mess around with this tone curve. Bring this down like that. That looks nice. Before and after, looks awesome. Let's mess around with the clarity just a tiny bit too. Contrast, just dialing everything in. I love all these knobs. It just really, it really does make it that much easier to just kind of see what you like and how you know how much contrast, how much uh, clarity, highlights, shadows, all that stuff. You can really just dial it in. Um, okay, so now we've edited this photo and the next photo is from the exact same location, just a different pose. Um, so we're gonna copy it. Now we can go to the next photo, paste, and there's our edit, which is just, that's such a nice touch. Let's see. Um, this photo does need to be straightened, so we're gonna use the control dial here. Perfect. Um, and now I can just kinda just micro adjust. Don't need to do too much because it's the exact same light as before. I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast into the photo. 
see how that looks. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, we were very blessed to have some nice window pane light in here. I'm um, just gonna up that a little bit. I'm gonna mess around with the greens on her jacket, just a tiny. Bring that saturation down. I'm gonna actually bring up the luminance of the greens. Awesome. And actually, I think I like this edit better than the edit on the first photo from this location, so I'm gonna copy these settings. I'm gonna paste it here. So yeah, that actually looks a lot better. I'm gonna adjust the exposure. Cool, now we're gonna just check all these photos out real quick. So we'll start with the first photo. Just check out our edits. Um, I really like this kind of pastel matte look. As you can see, that's kind of the look I'm going for for all these photos. Um, yeah, that lighting looks really nice. Just beautiful natural light. The eyes are just popping in the photo. Um, yeah, I love all these edits. Um, they look good to me. It's kind of like a quick overview, not like super in depth, which is totally fine. Um, but uh, yeah, this this console was amazing. Um, hopefully you guys learned something from this video. I actually really enjoyed kind of messing around with this and playing around, see what I can do with it. it really, I really think it does change the way I edit my photos. Included with your purchase of the Loop Deck Plus is a configuration software built from scratch for an even better, faster, and more stable photo editing experience. For those of you who are interested in purchasing a Loop Deck, it is available in the Loop Deck online store, Amazon, and B&H Photo for $229. Or if you are the current owner of a Loop Deck, you can purchase the brand new Loop Deck Plus and receive $50 cash back. One of my favorite things is that all Loop Deck updates are 100% based on feedback from customers, so people just like us can voice our opinions and truly make a quality product that everyone can enjoy. Feel free to check out the link in the description to purchase a Loop Deck Plus for yourself.